So we're going to go through the aggregate supply curves now, focusing on the long run aggregate supply curve. Then later on, we'll talk about the short run aggregate supply curve. Uh, main thing is, is that the long run aggregate supply curve is reflecting the classical model of money neutrality. Uh, it's, it's built off the productivity chapter that we did in chapter seven. Uh, so that's where the long run aggregate supply curve comes from. The short run aggregate supply curve is meant to kind of explain uh, when prices cannot perfectly adjust in the short term, how can price levels change the aggregate supply in the economy? And that was really developed during the Great Depression to try to explain what was going on in the economy in the short run. So let's get started here. So aggregate supply is the total amount of supply of goods and services in your overall economy at any given price level. And a the short run is a typical supply curve that you would see. So this is telling you that as price levels rise in the short term, that can actually increase your quantity of aggregate uh, supply. So the short run here, if, if that is true, if, if price levels rising increases your quantity of aggregate supply, that tells you in the short run money is not neutral in your economy, that it can actually affect your real production or real GDP in your economy. So that's the short run model. And we're going to mainly focus on the long run model right now, which shows a vertical aggregate supply curve. If you have a ver vertical aggregate supply curve, this tells you price levels rise, price levels fall, no change in your real GDP. So that's consistent with the classical dichotomy, money neutrality, prices rise, prices fall, no impact on your real production. The natural rate of output for the long run uh, aggregate supply curve, that is when the economy is at its full potential for production. So in the United States, full potential, remember there's never zero unemployment rate, full potential for production would be when your unemployment rate is in its natural rate of 4 to 6%. So the full level of production would be like your factories are running kind of at best case scenario, you're using all your resources efficiently, and you're at full levels of employment. And at full levels of employment, remember the best case scenario is you will still have 4 to 6% unemployment. So what determines this natural GDP production? So think about it. Go back to the productivity chapter. The amount of machinery plays a role with the uh, amount of uh, abil ability to produce. The amount of workers or labor plays a role with the ability to produce natural resources human capital technology so this is your level of production so that's really what's telling you what determines your production level or real gdp in the long run not price level so if you have something like more labor or more machinery this whole curve will shift out to the right there'll be a larger natural level of production or if you think about it like if this represents right now uh, 2018, and I wanted to show 1950s natural rate of production. Well, we had less uh, labor, we had fewer uh, pieces of machinery, and overall lower levels of capital and lower technology levels. So 1950 would be to the left here. So as time progresses, as long as the economy grows and productivity increases, this curve should continue to shift out to to the right. And like I already stated, you can see price levels fall, price levels rise, no change in real output. And that's consistent with the classical dichotomy. So the classical dichotomy is why the long run aggregate supply curve is vertical. So already talking about this, uh, anything that increases your overall production, like more workers, in this case it's showing immigration, that could shift your long run aggregate supply curve to the right, more machinery more technology, better human capital, and uh, anything that would raise productivity, same thing, shifts the long run aggregate supply curve to the right. So just going through this real quick. Immigration uh, could change, you know, more workers could increase the overall long run aggregate supply curve. More people that retire could actually theoretically reduce your overall production if you have just more retirees and people out of the labor force. Uh, if anything, it could be done by governmental policies to reduce the natural rate of unemployment. So if there were things that, for example, got rid of some of the structural unemployment, let's say, for example, they got rid of minimum wage law, that would 
that would uh, reduce the natural rate and actually uh, increase the long run aggregate supply. So, uh, and by reduce the natural rate, uh, what I mean is reduce the natural rate of unemployment. And we already talked about this more machinery, human capital, more knowledge shifts the uh, overall supply to the right. And um, anything that would decrease those things, like natural disasters or war or something, could shift the curve to the left. And this be still with the productivity chapter, more natural resources, being able to access them can always increase uh, productivity and then increase your natural rate of production. And then the technology factor. So what that's telling you is that these are the factors that really change or shift the supply curve in the long run. So what we're seeing is we have two things going on here. The first thing is you have uh, the long run aggregate supply curve continually shifting to the right because of new technologies, more machinery, more human capital. That's fine. And then at the same time what happens, the central bank prints money and as they print money you see that uh, overall price levels tend to, to grow. So if aggregate demand and supply to come together to give you your price level. If they print money faster than the economy grows, there's more dollars per item and price levels have to, have to rise. So you can kind of see this. This is what we would see. We see in the United States economic growth, supply curve shifting to the right, and then overall higher price levels year after year because they're printing more money faster than the economy would grow. Just one note, if let's say they did not print money, uh, aggregate demand would stay exactly where it would be originally and the supply curve would shift to the right and you would have overall lower price levels and you would have deflation. So in the United States that's not happening which tells you that what's what's going on. They're adding to the money supply faster than the economy grows. More dollars per item means that there's more dollars associated with each item price levels have to to rise. So that's kind of explaining the long-run economy in the United States why you see overall larger GDPs year after year, that's the long run aggregate supply curve shift to the right, and then why do you see overall higher price levels, overall higher price levels, they print more money, people try to demand more, uh, more items per, uh, more dollars per item, price levels tend to, tend to rise. So that's kind of explaining what we actually see in the United States, inflation and increased production levels. So right there, inflation and output growth. So hopefully that kind of explains a little bit of the long run model that we see in the economy. And then we're going to use the short run model to help explain uh, recessions.